What's up, everybody? FSC Trucking.
I don't know. If the Peterbilt Air Leaf suspension, when I took the fifth wheel off to repair the power divider that I had broke, I found that the frame where the side rail meets the top flange cracked down that whole length. And the frame, structurally, you can see it's waved. It's terrible. But from where the frame was cut, right about where the upright for the head crack is right about there, from there forward, the frame is much thicker and is in really good shape. Everybody tells me Orwell needs to get hub piloted wheels. Why? Everybody busts my chops about the rusty wheel. I get it, but you gotta consider what I've been dealing with. Keeping up the shop, the channel, and everything I got going on, plus personal stuff with my children, Jen, and so on, I just don't have the extra money to throw putting all new 8 out is on the Orwell, so I don't. Why in the world would I convert it to hub pilot when stud pilot worked for all those years? And you guys, this is where you guys are killing me in the comments. Those differentials are going to be rebuilt as a matching set and put into Ford. Because the Ford only had Dayton-style spoke wheels, the front and back. Yes, it was a single axle. But because the truck is part of what I believe to be trucking history, I don't want its original form to be ruined. Now that truck has to make money. Now the dual drives, it's useless to me. These are the drives that's going to go in it in the max for the rest of the truck. So we got to rebuild it. That means we're going to cut this and use it as a temple. We'll get into that once we get them inside.
there's no parking brake and there's the air solenoid doesn't shut the engine off any longer so you have to hold your foot on the brake and stall it and that's how you shut her down Alrighty boys and girls, as you can see, I got the cab up. Now, I want to show you a couple things that on this truck are very different from Orwell, which you might have noticed straight away. Now, this engine is a Caterpillar 3406, commonly referred to as a 3406A. Now, one thing you may have noticed is the hole in the floor, the shifter, stays bolted to the frame right here. So, the old shop next door they were a cabinet maker so we got a lot of sawdust got blown out there so that's why there's a lot of sawdust everywhere but yeah there's your there's your shifter it's in gear now that we won't roll away so there's your shifter going to that linkage which is obviously worn out now this one has no real after cooler matter of fact it has no after cooler so just like the 7fb cat it's in orwell the charge air comes off the turbo and it goes right into a manifold and right into the head. It doesn't have an air to water cooler like Orwell does, which makes this a little bit taller. That's what that all is there. Of course, you got your standard fuel water separator, just giant fuel filter. I don't know if it's the right one or not. And then uh, basically, long story short, it's your Caterpillar 3406. It's very similar to... There's a lot of similarities to this, to the E model, and the C15, C16. Big difference is this 3406E, C15, C16 was an in was an overhead uh, cam. The cam was in the head, as opposed to these. The cam's in the block. Push rods, push up. Rock arms down. Push the valves. Now uh, the difference was the E model had a, a separate roller pusher injector down, where this is done here in the injector pump. That's right here. Now the other interesting thing about this truck. If you look up top, the air goes in right there on the roof, right there, that hat, and it goes down. There's a tube that runs right through the sleeper. Let me see if you can see it real quick. Come on, let me show you. There it is. See that tube? That's your air intake. It goes right through your sleeper, right through the bottom of the cab. But the air intake comes right through right there in that hat in that roof, through your sleeper comes out here comes out the bottom of the floor and that cup meets your air filter right here air is filtered pulled up into your turbo charge is blowing into your engine so here's your air filter canister right there see she has been sitting a while when it was sitting at the old shop uh, a bird in a nice nest sorry I took your house away you should have paid me rent. It's just like a standard 3406, just like Orwell. Same bracket, water pump, alternator bracket, alternator, same spot. Not much has changed. Oil cooler is still the same thing. Hole in the block for your water to go in. Matter of fact, if you take that off, you can look at your cylinder liners to check your condition. Um, they relocated the oil fill tube because just like the one that bent on Orwell, this one's completely gone. The dipstick, however, is still there though. See the dipstick tube all the way out to the front. You check it right there. Very similar to Orwell. The truck is remarkably similar to Orwell in the fact that, well, it's it's a 79, and this is the original engine to it, so it's a white caterpillar, Matterhorn White. Um it's amazing how similarity the truck is. That's basically I guess what I'm trying to get at is it's very very basically similar. Um this is all original. And uh, it needs some work.
Now it's also in the realm of possibility that this transmission is the same transmission as what's in Orwell. I do remember from driving it, it is a 13 speed. Now I don't know if it's a 146-13 Eaton Fuller, but it looks dimensionally about the same. And uh, judging by the color, it's probably a Weller unit. Here, look at the coloration on it. That color, that's typical of Weller. So that might be factory. So I think Weller rebuilt this, and if I did crawl underneath it, I bet I could figure it out. But, like I said, I think this is the same transmission. It might be. And if it is, when I take this all out, we're going to take the transmission out, and that's also going to get sent to Badger and be rebuilt, and that'll sit in the storeroom until uh, I need it. That way I have a spare transmission for Orwell, or eventually put this together. Possibly go in the Ford, because I don't really know what's in the Ford. I don't know what transmission that is. Here, let me show you. There is differences in it, right? So when you look at the housing on the back of the transmission, you see it looks, you know, you can tell it's a gear case, right? Well, let's go over here and look at the Ford real fast. You come to the back of the Ford's transmission, it's almost like just a flat plate with a yoke coming out of it. It's very different. I don't know nothing about this transmission, I wonder. The other thing, too, I noticed is the, uh, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, the motor mounts. Are very different the motor mounts are actually hooked to the bell housing as opposed to the adapter plate between the bell and the block i don't know if it's a cummins thing a ford thing i don't know so either way that's what we got here boys and girls ladies and gentlemen that's how we do it around here so this while i'm gone i'm planning on having dave and terry start tearing into it and getting it ready to be pulled because the plan is when i come back with the trailer the chapel trailer we're going to need a telehandler a rental one to uh unload that so my thought is we're going to pull this motor and transmission out along with if the lift cylinders come in we'll lift the cab up we'll plop that engine out and then we'll get working on our framework here like i said this frame it's pretty nasty see it's cracked right there it's very wavy if you stand back here and look we'll do a whole video on this eventually but you see how wavy it is yeah it's pretty nasty and this bracket shouldn't be here it should be down there so i don't know but either way that's the idea we're going to steal the running gear out of this and put it in the ford after we rebuild everything there we go plus all new rail ought to be nice and then eventually this truck's going to get all new rails and then redo the truck maybe rebuild that engine maybe put a b model in there i'm not really sure i gotta figure it out it's up to with the jake thing we'll see how that goes either way boys and girls this is what we got going on so yeah so tomorrow i go get loaded head out to seattle or actually tacoma unload that and then i go to north bend uh figure out how to get that truck uh figure out how to get that chapel trailer loaded on my trailer and then get home and then figure out from there so yeah it's gonna be busy 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 around here for the next like month for sure um i just got so much going on after july thank god things are going to start slowing down for me a little bit and we could definitely get get uh get more on uh trucking do more we can get more trucking done we can get more shop work done um yeah that's how we got it going on so man oh man i'm just busy and i'm glad you guys are here with me i hope you guys like the new content that i bring you guys into the shop we're starting to actually work on some of this old equipment not only just driving orwell but getting that ford going getting this peterbilt going you know what i mean and actually getting making the shop usable like what i always had envisioned when i first moved in here rather than just finagling with this that or the other but actually get it done so hope you guys like the new content leave a comment let me know how you think all right with that i'm gonna stop yapping i'm gonna go start the dually get on out of here all right actually no i gotta hook orwell up to the trailer then i can get out of here i forgot
Alrighty, that's it. Go home, nothing to see here.